There have been a total of 12 Pokemon in the OU tier that have survived Pokemon's immense power creep in the last two generations. This list does not include Pokemon from Generation 9, Generation 8, or Hisuian Pokemon because it's too soon to judge them from the implications of power creep. Despite that though, let's look at these Pokemon and see how they are faring in the current Teal Mask Generation 9 DLC metagame. This won't be an in-depth analysis because we covered 12 Pokemon and frankly I could talk forever about each one, so I'm going to highlight important points about them. Starting off with Generation 1. The Pseudo Legendary of Dragonite is one of the few relevant Pseudo Legendaries left in the OU tier after the fall of Garchomp. Dragonite has been able to maintain its relevance in the OU tier thanks to a couple of things. Its stats are an incredible spread and when you combine that with its multi-scale ability, its ability to extend its life on the battlefield, it's been able to be incredible since the start of Generation 9. And with Baxcalibur's ban finally a couple weeks ago, it's been able to slowly rise back up to the top with nothing of Baxcalibur's sword to threaten it out. Offensive sets with E-Speed or defensive sets have been both pretty critical in helping Dragonite stay alive. Even though it's slower than other pseudos, it's been having other redeeming qualities to help push it ahead in relevancy, which is why it'll always be a certain threat in the OU tier, so long as it's around with its solid, pretty good stats for a pseudo legendary. Hey, I know many of my viewers right now watching are not subscribed, and that is a huge no-no. We recently hit 10k subscribers, and we're trying to hit 20k by the end of this year, so if you like competitive Pokemon just like this, be sure to subscribe for more. Anyways, back to the regular scheduled video. The Fable is another Pokemon that's been able to stay in the OU tier for a month now since it's released back in the Pokemon metagame. Clefable has been having another huge mainstay metagame staple in the OU tier for generations on end. However, it lost key moves in Soft World, Heal Bell, Aromatherapy, Toxic, and Teleport in Generation 9, which in my opinion, this Pokemon may not last forever in the OU tier purely because move pool is everything for a Pokemon that just has the bare minimum stats to be bulky. and now has to rely on Moonlight that heals depending on the weather. Granted, Sun teams have been declining since Hearth Flame's ban, and Rain teams suck with Wellspring, Ogre Pond around, and other bulky waters as well. Magic Garden Unaware are amazing abilities, but as you can see on screen, how deserted its most viable moveset looks again, which just scares me in my opinion. Again, it still works and it's still good after all these years, but put in the same realm as it was before in my opinion, now sure, it was high on the usage list for October, granted because it's also one of the few walls that can also hold an item without repercussion, ignore Toxic and Burn and Hazards, but I still have concern for this Pokemon long term. It's a good fairy wall don't get me wrong but move pool is a glaring issue for it. It survived power creep for a month now, but I'm not sure that's going to be officially the case forever in Generation 9. Still though, solid stats great ability will keep it relevant as long as it's in the tier, and not so much as move pool as before. Zapdos is the final Gen 1 Pokemon that's been able to fly around in the OU tier thanks to its stat spread alongside its hidden ability to be a solid physical wall in the tier, punishing physical attackers by slowing them down, for example like Sneasler. Zapdos also works really well with the rain teams and can be on the offensive with moves like Thunder, and with the DLC, it's got even better with Weather Ball as an added bonus for Weather Type coverage. For example, Water Type Weather Ball for those Ground Type Pokemon that could switch into Zapdos before. While all recovery like Roost did get nerfed in PP just generation, it really hasn't bothered Zapdos as that defensive pivot as much. Volt Switch is still incredible to keep momentum in play, and Discharge as well helps around with increasing paralysis chances. And thus, for all these reasons, Zapdos has been able to steadily remain in the OU tier, unlike its other siblings. Moving on to Generation Three, we got Torkoal. I don't think this needs much of an explanation, as it's probably the best route user in the metagame, which has enabled so much in the Generation 9 metagame, taking back from Chiyu to all the way up to Hearth Flame, Ogre Pond, and even still now with the Ancient Paradox form still in the tier. It's bulky, can set up hazards, deal good damage, and as long as Paradox Brethren are still around, which are the best Sun abusers at the moment around in the metagame, this Pokemon will always have a spot to stay in the OU tier. Generation 4, interestingly enough, has three Pokemon in the OU tier, starting off with Empoleon. Now, it's probably due to new Toy Syndrome, but it certainly helps that the new changes with Flip Turn, Scald, and its new ability of competitive have helped it raise it from the competitive graves. I went more in depth than Fucking Polion in this video a while back, so if you guys want to know more of my opinions on this Pokemon, be sure to check out on that video. I don't think this Pokemon will be staying in the OU tier for long because Alomomola does its job better, even though Empoleon has a superior typing. Ogre Pond Wells can handle it pretty easily as well. However, Empoleon will definitely be something to talk about in the UU tier, as I think it has enough to remain relevant down there as a bulky attacker or even as a wall in certain cases. Next is obvious, the most famous Pokemon in the OU tier right now in Gliscor. Even though it's lost Roost, this Pokemon's dominance in the tier as of this moment needs no introduction. Toxic Spike, Spikes, Toxic Protect, EQ, Knock Off, Poison Heal, Good Stats, etc. all make this an exceptionally thought of Pokemon. And for the first time actually, it's even considered as the best ground and flying type user in the tier over Landorus Therian. It is super versatile and is taken up as its spot as that glue essential piece on many teams. Hazards are right now at its peak and Gliscor not only can take advantage of it, it can also threaten our opponents with Toxic and even with offense 
hundreds of facade sets that got even better with the advent of terrestrialization, making facade a stab type move for this flying scorpion. It's got everything in this toolkit to be really good and again, just like with Empoleon, I made a video a couple weeks ago actually going really in depth analysis of my thoughts on Gliscor, so be sure to go check that video out if you guys want to know more about Gliscor and its dominance in the OU tier. The last generation 4 monster in the OU tier is Manaphy. Manaphy in this generation in my opinion has been way more powerful thanks to ever to two things. It's got the signature move of take car which in essence is heal bell plus combine together which basically means you cannot take it down with toxic as easily. With base 100 stats across the board the advent of terrestrialization has also further increased not only its potential power but also helps it maneuver threats like wellspring ogre pond, rillaboom etc extending its life force on the field as well. And with take card as well it's been able to utilize stored power sets featuring the one on screen. Tail glow full special attacking sets have also been able to blown up our teams to smithereens and actually speaking of so, it's given pause for a cause ban this little cute creature but in my opinion with wellspring ogre pond around with the water absorb etc it shouldn't really be banned from the metagame although feel free to let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Manaphy's also got a deep move pool from scald, ice beam, dazzling gleam, energy ball etc which really helps it out. In this age of hyper offensive teams that are explicitly running around in the metagame being able to get off high damage quickly with one set and go is crucial to its dominance. It's a solid pokemon and has been for generations on end and doesn't seem like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. Lander's Thin is the only generation 5 Pokemon to live through power creep time and time again every generation. One of the kings of competitive play have surely been showing its dominance time and time again, although it seems like in generation 9 that dominance has been seeing its final stop. Purely because Game Freak decided to nerf its moves at completely removing Defog, Knockoff, and Toxic. Defog could be used as another counterpoint in this already hazard filled tier which desperately needs more users of it or viable users I should say than Corviknight. Knockoff is the best utility move a Pokemon can have and it's also great tarp type coverage for it and toxic is well just toxic. It completely changed the dynamic of defense of Lando T that can stall out opponents with bulk and dish out a huge toxic solid damage. Now with new power creb mons with Tusk, Gliscor getting a buff, Tinglu, etc. It's time as an OU staple is coming to a head and I won't be as surprised as of next month it's in the UU tier or maximum UUBL tier. Ground and Flying is essentially overtaken by Gliscor and it's a shame how far this Pokemon has fell due to power creep and a huge nerf but that's sometimes how the cookie crumbles. The only gen 6 mod to survive power creep in the current state of OU is Greninja which has had an up and down relationship so far in the OU tier but ever since Battle Bond Greninja's release it's been nothing short of an OU staple. Battle Bond got nerfed for this generation however even though we don't have the overpowered Ash Greninja it still has a much better ability than the nerf protein it used to have to run. It's the fastest protein slash libero user but also lacked in power and either had to run specs or life rope to make up for it even though a couple generations ago that was deemed as overpowered with its fast speed and good attacking stat and now that attacking stat isn't as it used to be. With Battle Bond however it's an added benefit for Greninja for example it's able to run free and be able to run moves without locking into move or taking damage per turn. Life Life Orb now is even better because now Life Orb at least is not that much uses because now Life Orb is stacked on top of the 1.5 multiplier from Battle Bond itself which makes it even better. In addition with that speed boost it can now contest with booster energy Pokemon for field position as well. However with the release of the DLC I'm not sure how much it'll purely last because of Ogre Pond, Wellspring and Manaphy are just better water type options as of this moment with Ogre Pond having water absorb to stop massive Terra Water, Hydro Pump damage from Greninja and Manaphy having stored power sets and take our sets take over the metagame. It's on the brink of elimination from the OU tier for the second time this generation and will probably be down to UU to no one's surprise or maybe UUBL at the max. There are three more Pokemon that have survived power creep at least as of this generation of generation 9 and all three are now from generation 7. The first one has to be Ribombi and this thing is garbage until you realize how potent sticky webs have been as a combo in this generation. It's purely an OU because of hazard stack and sticky web and certain Pokemon are able to abuse webs like Iron Moth and Heart Flame prior to its ban which is made it super good. For more info on Hazard Stack and how Ribombi's really helped propel itself in the OU tier, check out this video I made last week. It really goes in depth and just covers all the points I was just going to regurgitate it as well if you want more info on Ribombi and the state of Hazards as of this moment. Alolo Ninetales is the next one with Ice type getting a huge buff in this generation to getting an added buff to its defense stat now when Snow is up. It certainly has boosted the popularity of Snow teams, well at least before Backscalibur was banned because Backscalibur could hide behind Ninetales Aurora Veil and then D-Dance and sweep the team. Even though Backscalper has been banned, Aurora Veil is still a powerful asset that is frankly the only reason it's in the tier because it's the fastest fail user that we have. Pokemon like Manaphy can still see worthwhile be used behind it and overall, Alolo Ninetales for the most part has been doing what it's been doing for all this time throughout every generation with just a little bit more added buff of snow over hail. The last Pokemon that has successfully survived power creep in generation 9 is Toxapex. 
This Pokemon needs no introduction. It's been a bulky water type regenerator fiend for as long as I can remember since its release and resumed back to what it's always been doing since the start of Scarlet and Violet. Right now in the metagame though, with the loss of Scald as good reliable chip damage is mostly been deemed as too passive in the metagame. And even though it has better typing, Aloma Mola is the far better water wall not only because it has recovery and generator, but at least it has some solid chip damage to use. Toxpex only has chilling water and Surf really as good reliable chip damage. And Surf, well... But the reason why Scald was really good was because it's still threatened out to status opponents out, which is permanent compared to chilling water, which doesn't have permanent ability with its only option to lower down the attack, which can be really taken out if you switch in out of the Pokemon, where Burn or Toxic from regular Toxic were both ideal options that really hampered Pokemon one on the opponent's side. Surface Well is meant to do solid damage, but off of those stats, it's really doing nothing and if you really want damage as utility per se. Toxpex has other good utility moves in Haze and Toxic, etc, but it has to rely on Chilling Water or Surf for some optimal chip damage, which will not cut it with its low attack stats and thus, that's why it really misses Scald as that other utility option that also did some damage. And for the next coming months with Power Creep becoming even stronger with the Indigo Disc as well, I just don't see how Toxpex is going to last in the OU tier that often. It's so far lived through Generation 9 Power Creep, but it might my opinion those days are over and it's going to be in the uu tier pretty soon these 12 pokemon have survived power creep thus far in generation 9 it will be interesting to see whether or not that number grows or shrinks as generation 9 continues to chug along generation 4 and gen 7 have the most pokemon in the tier excluding generation 8 and generation 9 obviously which is cool to be honest if you're wondering why i didn't mention blissey it's because this pokemon is really relevant because of the advent of blood moon ursula and otherwise hasn't been really good good like the other pokemon on this list they actually have an actual niche in this metagame where blissey's niche is purely for one Pokemon only, and otherwise it's completely useless. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this, and thank you to my members for their continued support. If you wish to support me even further, links to the membership are down below, and be sure to join the Chompy Discord as well, links in the description down below as well. Other than that though, I'll catch you guys in the next video, thanks for watching as always.